How's it going? Good to see you. Welcome to the Chaos Metric Model Meeting. It's nice to have you here. So um, today, re really what I'd like to talk about is um, our conversation around ISO or ISO standardization of some of the metric models. Um, and so I think there had been a variety of different conversations. I don't mean this in a bad way, but just different conversations kind of occurring in different places, some on Slack, um, some here in this meeting. And so this document here, um, the ISO standards material, is meant to kind of bring all of the things together um, in one place. Oops. Um, and so Divya, I had talked with, um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with Divya, um, but Divya is located uh, as part of our the Chaos Asia region. And Divya has expressed interest in helping kind of lead the uh -huh. the Divya has offered to kind of lead the efforts around just coordinating ISO work. And so this document you see here is one that, that Divya had put together. Um, and so what this contains is kind of a, a path forward that she's presenting, and I'd like to kind of present it here. Um, some related documentations from ISO, the presentation that um, was done with Open Chain and JDF, which is also in the minutes, some outstanding questions that we have, and then also um, I had this includes the the Miro board that was put together as well as the literature review that is meant to support that Miro board with a few of the candidate models for uh, ISO that we have talked about. So I thought we could spend just a little bit of time working through this and just kind of get feedback. Is that okay with folks or do you have other thoughts? It's just this seems like the group where we're talking about these things. Um, okay, so um, just in terms of standardization, I think the first thing that Divya had put together was kind of just these different types of standards. I am not at all familiar with the difference between them, <laughs> nor could I necessarily speak to why one is better than the other. I just want to say that we've always kind of just landed on ISO standards. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any thoughts on, on the difference standards bodies and why we may pursue one over the other. Like, I don't. <laughs> it's just, it's always been ISO. And so I just, I, I was, I appreciate this as just kind of presenting the other options that are kind of in front of us. Okay. Um, so I think just in terms of standardizing the metric model, um, or a standardizing a metric model or a series of metric models. Um, there were a couple stages that Divya had proposed. So from proposal stage through preparatory all the way down to publication stage. And so what I understand is that um, Divya is at least interested. I don't know if Divya is on the call yet. No, it's okay. But interested in kind of helping work us through these stages. Just because I think it... <laughs> I think it would make sense to have one person kind of organizing um, the work that needs to be done around ultimately publishing any metric model as an ISO standard. Does anybody have thoughts on this? Like, I don't know whether or not this is how accurate the information is in here, but just kind of moving us through a series of stages that seem to come with, with ISO standardization. Anybody have perhaps? Perhaps one of the comments that we had a, uh, during the last call uh, were related about exactly kind of this, about how can we bring um, not only chaos people, but invite others to the conversation. So they are either formal or informally or reviewers or whatever it's being produced. Because at the end, we are a small group of people, not many. Mm -hmm. So the more people validating the approach and the discussions and everything, probably the better. Um, and for this, just to mention that we, we were thinking about having a day or half day or a few hours during the Open Source Summit in Austria, okay. uh, where we could invite 
people. The answer from the open source summit organizers is that the free rooms are full. Uh, we may pay if we want for something else, or at some point we can even collocate something, whatever, out of the summit. But sound it to Sean and Yehui. Dom, I don't know if you were last week, I think so. Well, like something that may work. So okay. So some context. Okay. Um, that is, when is that? The Open Source Summit Europe? It's uh, mid-September. Mid-September. Um, that sounds great. So let's um, hold that idea because I think that would be great to have like an in-person meetup. And I think you had another comment in there too, is like how to in include the most number of people to provide feedback and review on the work that we're doing and transparency, like as we move through these stages. And I think that's a great comment as well. Okay. Um, any other thoughts, at least at this point? I'm kind of showing this work. Okay. Um, so there is the presentation. I think this is going to be, I think that's, I browsed through it, but this is kind of a nice, um, nice overview of what OpenChain had done with the Joint Development Foundation. So JDF. Okay, so a um, few questions that I think kind of remain um, for us outside of what you had talked about, Daniel, like organizing the work within the chaos project. Um, is, is just really kind of this first one. I have honestly had a really tricky time engaging with the JDF. So I know Divya is also going to try to engage with um, the JDF. So I've had early conversations with them. I, to be honest, <clears throat> I'm not sure how um, important it is for us to necessarily work with the JDF. My understanding was that the Joint Development Foundation at the LF would just kind of help be there to answer questions as we had them going through the ISO process, but it's not necessarily that the standards that we create would sit at the JDF. See what I'm saying? Like they would be an available resource as we move through this process. So what Divya had proposed is she was going to reach out to Shane Coughlin at OpenChain, I'm sure many of you know, because I know OpenChain has been through this process before. And maybe we can work with folks at, or at least let Shane know that we're doing this or folks at OpenChain know that we're doing this. So as we have questions and kind of moving through these stages and creating a standard, we may have somebody to turn to just to ask questions. Thoughts on that? Like engaging the JDF, that's this, that's this, or if we need to. I think the, the, the point is that we would like to invite to involve JDF is that uh, we need kind of support or, or instructions how to proceed the next step of the ISO standard. So it, as Matt, you mentioned, if Chen could help us Based on the experiences on the on the open chain, yeah, I think that would be great at the first step. Okay, great. I so that's great to hear. I just don't want this if we can't really um, set up like consistent communication. I don't want that to be a blocker for us. <laughs> like there have to be other ways <laughs> to create these standards, and if. If we just can't get our emails answered, we, I think we just need to find a different way. That's, that's really what those points are. Um, okay. Um, can, I, uh, can I ask a quick question? Of course. This? Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in favor of creating standards, but I am kind of wondering if uh, are our metrics models, are they mature enough to move into? The standards, the standards process. Do we have, do we have one that we think is is mature enough? It's been, it's been built out. It's been tested. Uh, or, or is this we decided to do the standard and then we're going to come up with a a metrics model to to do it? Um, I'm, I'm wondering if the yep. if we'd be better off uh, kind of advancing a mature metrics model rather than just kind of building a metrics model just to create a standard. Yeah, and we do have a, a list kind of that we had talked about a long time ago of some potential candidate 
metric models? So I was peeking through those and none of those seem mature. Well, can just a, a, either either way probably works, but I, I'm just curious what our what our plans are for this. I guess. Um, yeah, so I, th I think one of the things to point out is, and this may help in this um, with your question, Kevin, um, is that from my understanding is there's a couple different ISO standards, at least at the broadest level. So one is the document standard and the other is a process standard where the process standard is like how to take something and what is the standardized process by which you go about implementing that thing and then how you go about understanding the results from that implementation. And then the other is a document standard, which is really just a description of a particular thing. And it's a standard standard way of describing something. And so from, from my understanding is we would be focusing just on the document standard, not the process standard around ISO. <clears throat> so then the metrics models that we have, a little like the metrics, would really just be um, standardized definitions of how to consider, for example, project influence. Does that help at all? Or you're muted if you're saying something. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it helps. Okay. Okay. Um, but to your point, I mean, in any of these cases, you're probably right. They're, they're not to the level of what ISO would require to be even a document standard. And we'd have to, that's part of that work that we would have to do. I guess I would, I would, I wouldn't be in favor of doing it just to do it, I guess is the, uh, uh, I don't think uh, we're, yeah. Um, I don't, and I'm not saying that's what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, if there, if there's a need and if there's some, if there's something that we, that we feel we really want to share as a community, as a standard, then, then I'm, then I'm all for it. I just, yeah. uh, I, I don't, I don't think we should force the issue because I think if we kind of, if we force it and we're not ready, then uh, our output maybe isn't going to be as good as we'd like. That's fair. Yeah, I'm trying to, like by bringing all of this together, definitely not trying to force any issue, just trying to think through how we could do it. Yeah, then, then maybe I would advise to maybe take this slowly. <laughs> we are. I mean, we have been. This is even to get to this document, it has taken... <laughs> <laughs> it feels like <laughs> feels like six months or something like that. Um, I do think at least some of the motivation that I hear around creating standards is the the need within companies to um, when engaging with chaos artifacts that engaging with them in a corporate setting um, can be a more effective if they actually are standardized ways of thinking about things as opposed to just saying this is a community that has come up with this um, the standard gives us the the weight to say this is a community that has gone through this effort to consider whatever upstream project and stability and then taking that extra step of kind of going through this entire process with a larger group of people to ensure that this is something that's of high quality so I think it's really just a, a, trying to improve the, the quality of the artifacts that we're producing as used within an organization. That's a big motivation that I understand. Others may have other things that they understand for doing this. These are good. Is that, hopefully this is- I would like yeah. to add something, Mark. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, so the initial idea to creating ISO standard, at, at least for my first, as you can say, uh, chaos community as well beginning, we have released every every year have white uh, white paper. Um, I would like sixty or seventy metrics be released every year, and uh, it could be a, a achievement or output of this community. Mm -hmm. uh, stand from the metrics we're working. 
but uh, uh, like two years ago, we decided to stop this kind of periodic release. Uh, but uh, we would add a new metrics or metrics model every time we want. But there's no release sent from the community out output. Uh, it, it it's good at some point, but also people lack of uh, focus. So what kind of phase of, of this community produced, I mean, as an artifact to the, to the users? That's the first. So I would like to use this as a standard as our uh, output of mm -hmm. chaos. Okay. That's first point. The second point is that um, I would like to involve more people uh, from all over the world, no matter from China or, or outside of China, from Europe or, Europe or US, uh, from big company or small company, to involve more people working together on this metrics and metrics model. Uh, even we already create many uh, exist metrics and models, uh, but uh, it just uh, using take this chance. I mean, creating this ISO standard as a new opportunity to to attract more people from from collaborations, uh, co sorry, co corporations. Mm -hmm. And that's the third. Uh, that's the first the two major intentions from me. And as Matt, Matt mentioned. Uh, in China, I guess also in some other countries, uh, if we produce some standard that would attract more corporations, uh, companies would pay attention on that. If not, uh, you know, it's a, uh, I mean, we can take this as a standard to produce more influence all over the world. Yeah, that, that's the, my main point. Got it. Thank you, Yahui. Can um, I just add one more comment? Of course. Yep. And I and I do uh, I do agree. I think uh, uh, moving towards an ISO standard is great. The my the the concern I have is around the stability of our our metrics and our models. Right. If we're turning our either a metric or a model into a standard. Uh, then we really need to make sure that we are releasing a stable version uh, of that metric or that model. Uh, and uh, to Yahui's point, you know, we, we've gone through some periods where we've released a bunch of stuff, uh, and it's all good. It all it all it all helps. But I wouldn't necessarily characterize the stuff we've released so far as stable. Uh, and the and the reason I would say that is because we we keep on having to go back and kind of edit them and and keep them up to date and with an ISO standard I think I think we need to release it with the idea of this has some stability for a period of time I guess that that's kind of the the uh, uh, my my concern I think we had talked did, did we when did we talk about this was it yesterday or two days ago in the community call um about the cadence between say releasing a metric model as an iso standard does anybody remember this and then the possibility that the metric model might change you know because they do change sometimes like you know there's something new that's added to the metric model so there is a possibility that um the iso standard would be released say today and then over the course of the next six months we do make some incremental changes to that underlying metric model but the standard has still been released as a standard so just keeping those two things or thinking about how those two things can stay aligned um, and i think the discussion went that that the standard is in fact when it's released the standard for whatever that period of time is like a year and there may in fact be changes to the underlying metric model, um, like an improvement in, in writing, um, a new metric that's included on a metric model or the removal of a metric in a metric model. Um, but that wouldn't be present in the ISO standard until we do another release the next year. 
You know what I mean? Like there could there could be a bit of a mismatch between what we have in our GitHub repository and what the actual ISO standard looks like. So that's kind of what I heard you talking about, Kevin, a little bit there as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, and I guess I'd, I'd add to the, uh, my, my previous uh, advice was to take it slow. And I would also add to that, whatever we're releasing, I think we should err towards the side of simplicity uh, and maybe try not to release too much. I start with, uh, so just take it slow, err on the side of simplicity and. Yes. I mean, I think when we had talked prior, let's just pretend this would be an example one, the upstream project instability, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like to move through, like we would only take like one <laughs> metric model through this <laughs> as a first go, like we need to understand the process ourselves. And so I don't think we would be saying, let's take all metric models, however many there are, and try to move them all through this process at the same time. So that would be, I think, part of the slow that you mentioned and being thoughtful of the process. Yes. And 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 I'm not saying that you all aren't doing this. I'm just yeah. uh, uh it's, yeah, it's definitely, yeah, so definitely don't want to overwhelm. I agree. Okay, this is a really good conversation. Thank you. This is exactly what I was hoping to have. So I really appreciate this feedback. Um, uh, Daniel, you had said, I'm, if I'm not wrong, in China, the standards are codified with, what is GB? Um, like ISO, da, 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 GB. I don't know the acronym. Uh, maybe Yahoo. Uh, is GB a standards body? Uh, not sure. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's just it's just when, when I read the standard in China. In Chinese, uh, in Chinese it's called a Guo Biao. It's a it's a national uh, standard in China. Okay. Just drop the link to the Wikipedia page. Is this something we have to care about? Oh, oh, no, it's just a, uh, there is a list of standards that we had before, so then there is a okay. standard in China. Gotcha. So maybe that would be part of this yes. list up here, <laughs> like others, <laughs> others to think about. Okay. Yeah. And then while, while, while you were having this discussion, uh, Kevin, uh, I was thinking that perhaps so the problem I think, or, or the answer we are trying, the, the question we are trying to answer here is, uh, what's the definition of what's what's mature enough? Um, I guess maturity will be given by the practitioners or those using the the standard or, or being part of the conversation. Um, uh, so mainly, uh, yeah, practitioners of uh, whoever is using the, the chaos metrics, whatever, and say, okay, this is this is mature enough for me. So that's why I think it's key to bring to bring others. And in any case, uh, and I, I don't want to mix here two, two different concepts, certification and the standardization, but uh, when you are trying to certify certain things, for instance, software, you take a release. So I assume that in standards, we have uh, releases or versions and evolutions of the, mm -hmm. of the standard at some point. So. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I think that would be like the in some of my early conversations with JDF, that there is like a, a cadence of release and they version the standards themselves, go from a one to a 1.1 1 .1 or whatever it might be. I like the, uh, I like that idea of uh, addressing my maturity by uh, feedback from, uh, from industry and, and, and maybe even uh, practical use in industry, right? So this is not a, so, so maybe for the, for the, uh, the models that we release, we need to really, we really need to make sure that this is actually a model that is being used in practice to some degree, or a collection of metrics that are being used in practice to some degree, uh, and not necessarily a concept that we are kind of trying to, uh, to, to put together in, in chaos to, to measure uh, something 
in general, right? Fair. Yep. Uh, but I, I'm not sure what those metrics would be. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe that's related to the the work that's Don doing, that Don is doing. Maybe so that's I, how we that's maybe that's how we would identify the models. I can, I can actually comment to that in some of the work that Divi is doing as well. Um, so I think part of what Divi is doing is trying to um, connect with folks that are at open chain. And I think there are a number of companies in Japan that have an interest in a variety of different metric models, some that I think we have produced, others that may be not produced yet. Um, so trying to identify what those models could be from people in practice, I think is one of the things that Divya is trying to do. You know, so to your point that we're not just saying this, like, this is the one we're going to standardize because we feel like that's the one <laughs> we need to do. But actually trying to say there is um, industry interest in one of the metric models that we have or one that is to be determined. Okay, um, this is great. Thank you for this conversation so far. As, I, yeah, yeah. as far as I'm from, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. My time from open chain and ISO standard, and they have a public that. And, and involve um, some companies say, okay, if you have interest to, to, to do some um, uh, verify on this standard, yes, go, uh, go ahead. Uh, please use this draft version to verify it in your company. So that's the way to verify this metrics model or standard is used for or not in practice. Gotcha. Um, Divya had also suggested having a, a meeting, a chaos meeting that is not recorded. Is any, was anybody part of that conversation so that it would be run under Chatham house rule? Um, because she had said there are a lot of organizations that she has talked to that can't actually, not only is the, t the time zone bad, <laughs> but a lot of the companies um, can't participate in meetings that are recorded. And so having a, at least a once monthly meeting with people from organizations who have an interest in developing models that could be candidates for these ISO standards, but we would run it at a time zone that's friendlier to folks uh, in Asia, as well as not recording it and running it under Chatham House rule. So that was another suggestion that was, I thought, pretty well received suggestion as a way to capture some of this information that I think you're talking about, Yahui and Kevin and Daniel, that you're all mentioning here. We, you're right, we need to get this information from people who are actually wanting these things um, in industry, because um, we may as well follow the lead of the people who, who want these, want this information. And that's the model that the to-do group follows. So that's how the to-do group meetings are, is that they're not recorded and they're under Chatham House rules. So that was, I think, the inspiration for maybe doing this with some of the chaos meetings as well. Yep, right on. Um, so I, I would, I can connect with Divya. I mean, it, I would suspect like the sooner we could start something like that, the better if she's willing to lead a meeting like that, that would be great. Um, and I think, Chatham House rule is pretty easy rule to follow. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not a very complex <laughs> uh, 
it's not like doing Robert's Rules of Order in a meeting or anything like that. I think it's basically just you can't ascribe anything that anyone says. You can talk about what was said, but you can't ascribe it to anybody, I think is basically what the rule says. So, okay. Yeah, and you can talk broadly about what was talked about as long as it can't be tied back to like people or companies. So yeah. you could say, you know, we had a discussion about the standards and we think this. These models. But you wouldn't be able to say that, um, you know, Daniel, who works at Baturgia, said. Yes. Yeah. Right on. Okay. Well, let me, um, why don't, at least as far as that goes, this is a really good conversation too, just in terms of how to organize the identification of those models. Um, again, thanks everybody for this conversation. Are there any other thoughts on this before I move on a little bit? Uh, rather than a, rather than a new meeting, yeah. uh, would it be okay to maybe, maybe every other metrics models meeting becomes Chatham House rules or something like that, rather than uh, rather than scheduling a completely new meeting for it, or uh, or maybe schedule a specific metrics models meeting to run. Yeah, or once a month. Or those, yeah, or 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 the metrics development meeting that could we could do it there as well. Yeah, I think um, yes. Um, I think we'd have to move time as well. You know what I mean? So like this meeting would have to move to like pretty late in US time would be my guess, or super early US time. Cause I think Yahui. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. On this call is, I don't know. I, I never even know what time it is. I always guess two or 3 AM, but. <laughs> um, okay. But yes, I understand your point. We've always been, try, uh, we've tried to keep our meetings always lower. <laughs> <laughs> Not more. <laughs> um, if it if it doesn't work out that way, that's okay. I just yeah, felt yeah. the need. I always feel the need to say less communication channels and uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll just yeah, remind if, we did it, if we did it super early uh, U.S. time, then we could also get folks in Europe like Daniel. Okay. I mean, I'm not that involved in, in the ISO stuff, so I don't really, I don't really care so much about me attending. But okay. I mean, yeah, doing it super early here could maybe work. Okay, I'll talk to Divya about that and just see kind of what her thoughts are on that, because I think she would be leading those meetings. So, um, so th I, I do think there is sometimes some money that is involved in this process. So from what I understand, there are people who are professional editors who can help assist in that process. And I do think we can try to track down some funds that could support that process. Um, I think these last couple questions a little hard to consider right now. How long will this take? Not sure. Um, and then how does this fit into larger considerations of open source project health? Um, I think things to kind of consider for the long run. I did, so this is great. Um, I did want to point out, Yuhui, you have been sharing this Miro board with, I think, um, work that a lot of folks have been doing in China. I think this is a way to kind of understand the landscape of um, where some of these standards could fit and help um, with our understanding of open source community health. So that's kind of starting over here on the left side. And I think this mapping exercise, as you have walked us through before, Yui, um, gives us some really nice mapping. And I do think this is something that does need to be required for ISO. There does need to be context given as to why a particular document um, needs to be a standard, kind of how it fits into a larger into a larger system, as opposed to just saying we want to create um, this as a standard for no reason at all, other than just creating it as a standard. Um, you or um, Rikau, do you have any comments on this? I know that you have spent a lot of time thinking through this. Uh, it's a very beginning thinking. Uh, uh, so I, I would like to set up a structure as a as a, a start point to let everybody involved to to get together uh, to discuss the structure of the ISO standard. 
uh, to trigger the more uh, people getting involved in this work. Yeah, that's my thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, if if Davia and you have more thinking how to proceed the following way work, I'm 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 fully support on this. Okay. Um, but but the structure of the whole ISO standard is what, uh, what I would like to do because we have to give people an overview, a landscape for how to understand the health of the open yeah. source community. Otherwise, if we only give them two or three metrics or metrics model, it's not good enough to describe the whole okay. health uh, of the community. Yep, I, I completely agree. Um, it provides a really nice context, for example, for the actual standardized model, um, so people can understand what it's helping achieve. So that's that's this mural board, and then this literature review, which is amazing, which is being done, is really meant to support, from what I understand, this mural board. So to give literature support um to existing work that has been done in these different areas again kind of strengthening the overall model and um, really just providing support um, for this model based on existing literature so thanks for all of that work because i know literature reviews are not always the easiest things to do <laughs> tracking that down okay And then lastly, just kind of alluded to and point well taken, like these have been talked about just as candidates to go through this process. This can obviously change. This is just based on historical conversations that we've had as potential candidates. So overall, what this whole conversation was about was just trying to say, we have a lot of things that we've talked about in a lot of different areas, whether it's on Slack or whether it's in this meeting or in, I think we've talked about it in the community call. And it was to bring all of these threads together <laughs> into one common place. So it's a little easier for folks like Divya or Yahui or Daniel or Kevin or myself or not, or whatever, to kind of work through all of the information that we have. Um, one, one question for people is right now, this is all sitting in a Google Doc, obviously. Does it make sense to create a repository for this work? Would it make sense to create a folder within, say, the community repository? It would, I think it would be kind of nice to move this information in some meaningful way onto GitHub, um, just so we can track it there. What are people's thoughts on that? I would tend to make it a subfolder of, of community rather than spinning up a new repository. Okay. And just call it like standardization or something like that. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Seems a little easier to work with. You ever just you ever type something and you know you typed it wrong and you just wait for the red squiggly to show up? We can move the. What's that? You we can move the existing resources files into that folder. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, we can we can move this ex existing resources, like ISO standard structures and the literature review, uh, files. Yes. That would be great. Once we also all reach out to Divya to set this up and then I'll let the group know. And then, yeah, everything can be moved there. Does, does models have a repo? Does this working group have a repo? It does, yes. Could we, rather than putting it in the community repo, could we put it in the models repo? Uh, just because the, the community repo isn't a working group. Uh, so the, the materials that kind of end up in the community repo are more kind of documents that we're no sharing with the community or resources that we're sharing with the community. Uh, and then like the models repo is more of a, it's just a place where we would work. 
No problem. And it does really seem like the all the ISO work is around the models that's as opposed to the metrics themselves. So um, and then obviously after we released them, that would be that would be the a time where we could move their presence to the community repo if we wanted to, but like the actual ISO standard form um, models. But yeah, just kind of the idea of keeping the work separate from the presentation, I suppose. Sure. No problem. That's interesting because I actually look as the at the community repo as the place where the community collaborates together on documents, not where we share things that we want to share with the community. Okay. I, I don't know. It's just it's interesting to hear Kevin describe it that way because I never I never thought that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I mean, if you look at what's in there, it's all the it's the governance documents, code of conduct, things of that nature, our knowledge base. Uh, but when we go and we when we define metrics, we do that inside the DEI working group, or we do that inside the, the metrics working group. So it's kind of the, I mean, obviously there's work being done in, in the community uh, uh, repo, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe I have a weird way of looking at it, so. All right, um, this is great. Do, do any people have, um, because we're approaching time and I really did want to get through this just to kind of consolidate this work and and um, bring it together. Do any people have any things they'd like to add beyond what was talked about here or what they saw, you know, in any in any of this or any like real, real uh, key reservations or concerns that you might have about this work? It's been a nice conversation. Okay, um, I'm gonna, I'll kind of pick this up. I'll probably in the the models Slack channel, um, ping Divya and just kind of give her an overview of this conversation and point her back to the document that she created. Um, and maybe talk about a few next steps, which I think could be really the creation of this folder in the metrics model repo which could be identifying a time where we could do the Chatham House rule meeting, figuring that out where other people could join and talk about the models that might be important to them. Um, and then also we can use that space to kind of keep people updated on our ability to find people to help us through this process of, of ISO. You know, it'd be nice if there were just a form online that we could just submit things to, but I'm sure there's not. So I think we do we do need a hand with some people. Okay. It was good. It was very, very good. Thank you for everybody's work and let's let's make this happen. So I really appreciate it. All right. Any other comments, questions? Feedback? Folks, till next time. I appreciate you staying up. Afternoon, morning, evenings, midnight, whatever it might be. Thank so. you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, bye.